Wow, look at all those bubbles. Millions and millions of purple bubbles overflowing. It's incredible. Hi, this is Nature Jack. Welcome back to Science with Nature Jack at Home. And welcome the J-Kid Philly community. And also welcome to all of our friends around the world who are watching Science with Nature Jack at Home videos. Today we're going to do lessons about something called yeast. Yeast is a fungus. And we're going to talk about a specific holiday called Passover. Welcome to the week of Passover for of our Jewish friends. Passover commemorates when the Jews were in Egypt, they were called Israelites, and they were building large structures like the pyramids for the Pharaoh. It was a mean Pharaoh, and he was keeping the Jews or the Israelites in Egypt. And then they had a chance to leave Egypt in a hurry. So yeast is a um, type of fungus like mushrooms, and yeast when mixes with sugars, creates a gas called carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is a gas which rises, and that's why we use yeast to make bread or challah. So when it's mixed with the simple carbohydrates in the mix to make bread and challah, it makes the bread and challah rise, and we get bread that actually looks like this. So it's very full. Now the Jews, when they had to leave Egypt in a hurry, didn't have time to add yeast to the bread, so they ended up making a flat bread called matzah. That looks like this, it's flat. And matzah is what we call the bread of affliction. And the Jews made their bread in a hurry and it never had a chance to rise. So today, we're gonna do two experiments using yeast and we're gonna show you how yeast, when mixed with different solids, creates carbon dioxide and makes things rise. So the first experiment we're going to do is we're going to take some warm water, which you have at home, and you can put it in a pitcher or some kind of container. So we're going to take our warm water, and then, of course, we're going to add our yeast to it. You can buy yeast in the store. They sell packets of yeast. They also sell jars of yeast. Or if you go online, you can find large containers like this yeast. And what we're going to do is we're going to take two tablespoons or essentially what's inside a packet of yeast from the store. And I'm going to take my two tablespoons of yeast and I'm gonna add it to this very warm water. I'm gonna add just a little bit more and I'm going to stir it up like this. So it mixes the yeast in the water, mixes together and makes a yeast solution. Now inside that solution, I'm going to add some sugar. So you can buy sugar uh, at the store, or you can get packets like this at Wawa or anywhere else you buy coffee. And you take the packets and you open them up. I'm going to put them into a science beaker because this is our science experiment. And I'm going to pour, again, two tablespoons of sugar into my yeast solution. So this is one tablespoon and this is two tablespoons. And I'm going to mix that with my yeast and water. So we're going to have a yeast and sugar and water solution. And if you let your children smell it, it actually smells like Cheerios. So that's kind of fun to ask them what it smells like. So we're gonna set that aside right here. And then we're going to take an empty bottle. And you know this bottle isn't completely empty. Does anybody know what it's filled with? it's actually filled with air, the same air that's surrounding us. So it's not exactly empty, but you can explain to your children that empty bottles are actually filled with air. So we're gonna take that bottle and then we're gonna take a balloon. Hopefully you have a, some balloons at home from left over from a party or anywhere. And you wanna make sure that the balloon is, is stretched out really well. So you wanna pull it in all directions so it gets stretched out. So when it inflates, it grows the size it's supposed to go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this yeast, water, and sugar solution, and I'm gonna use a funnel, which is shaped like a V, to help pour it in. So I'm gonna pour some of this solution into the bottle. I'm gonna fill it up about halfway. Now, right now, while this is going on, the yeast is mixing with the sugar, and it's eating the sugars, creating that gas we talked about, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull open the, the uh, top of the balloon or the lip of the balloon, and I'm going to put it over the opening of the bottle or the neck of the bottle, we call it. You want to make sure that the balloon completely covers up the top so the air, the, excuse me, the carbon dioxide doesn't escape. I'm going to shake it a little bit. And what happens is the, the yeast mixing with the sugar will start to create that carbon dioxide and the balloon will inflate or fill up with carbon dioxide because the carbon dioxide inside the bottle has nowhere to go but up and it can't get out of the top of the bottle. So the balloon will fill up with carbon dioxide and inflate. And it takes about 45 minutes to an hour. So you won't be able to see it right here, but here are two bottles I did earlier. And you can see that the balloons filled up with the carbon dioxide and they're inflated just like that. Hey, this is Nature Jack. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. And if you celebrate Passover, happy Pesach. Thank you.